Hello everyone, welcome to another ALP video. I'm Kevin and today we'll be covering recursion. So first of all, what is recursion? In the context of combinatorics, it's basically finding the answer to a problem in terms of a smaller version of that problem. And if that smaller version is still too hard, we can rewrite that in an even smaller version and repeat until we get a version that is too easy to, that is easy to do directly. And this smaller version is what we call a base case. And don't worry if that doesn't make too, sense, too much sense right now, uh, it's better to see recursion with an example and hopefully it will start to make sense. So here's our first example uh, taken from the 2007 AMC 12A, right? So call a set of integers spacey if it contains no more than one out of any three consecutive integers. How many subsets of one, two, three, all the way up to 12, including the empty set are spacey? So if you try stuff like casework or complemented counting, maybe pi, uh, techniques like these are extremely tedious and not entirely feasible because there are just so many cases and it just gets incredibly messy and it's very easy to mess up. So we have to resort to recursion. So the idea behind recursion is we basically take a smaller version of this problem. So how can we make this problem smaller? Well, we could just start by replacing this number 12. Uh, we could just change that to like 11, right? That would make it smaller technically. Um, the problem is if we replace it with 11, uh, we still have kind of have the same issue. It's not really easy to do. Uh, it will result in some really tedious casework or complement accounting or whatever technique you choose to use. Okay, so we can just replace 11 with an even smaller number, right? So let's just go all out and let's just say we're gonna replace the number 12 with one, okay? So we have this, we literally have the set one and we want to find how many subsets of this contain no more than one out of any three consecutive integers, right? So how many sub spacey subsets of the set one are there? Well, we basically just have two, right? We have the empty set, which contains nothing. And we have the subset that just contains one, right? So I'll just say uh, for n equals one, where n is like the size of the set, basically, uh, the answer is going to be two, right? Okay, uh, so that, did not really help us solve the original problem, but okay, let's just see a slightly hard example. So n equals two. Well, uh, if n equals two, basically we have the empty subset. Um, yeah, so we basically have the empty subset, right? Or we can have one in our set, or we can have two in our set. Um, note that we cannot have both one and two because uh, this is not spacey since it contains two consecutive numbers. And in any three consecutive integers, we can only have one, right? So this obviously does not work. Okay. So, um, so for n equals two, the answer is just going to be three. Okay, so what about for n equals three? Well, just like with before we have the empty set, we have one, we have two, and we also have three this time, right? So if we replace this 12 with three. Um, we also cannot have more than one element because say if we have any two elements, let's say we have like one or and two, um, then we have more than one integer out of three consecutive integers, right? Because out of one, two, and three, we can't have more than one of those. So in other words, we can only have at most one integer. Okay, so n equals three gives us an answer of four. Okay. So at this point, if we just keep going, uh, you might actually suspect that the answer could just be like n plus one, right? Just based on these first three examples. Um, that's actually not true. The reason we get n plus one for these first three examples is because... Uh, no more than one out of any three consecutive integers. That basically just translates to more, no more than one integer for these uh, for n equals one, two, and three because uh, we only have three consecutive integers at most, right? So once we get to like n equals four, um, we actually have more than uh, five possibilities. We have the empty set. Uh, we have the set with just one. Um, we have the set with just two, right? This is like before. We have the set with just three, and we have the set with just four. And we also have the set with a one and four, right? Because this time, uh, one and four, it doesn't contain two integers from a set from three out of like a set of three consecutive integers. So this is still fine. So uh, for n equals four, our answer is actually going to be five. And at this point, if you try to keep going, um, we end up just having to resort to casework again. So we're no better off than just where we started originally, right? If we just keep bashing like this, um, there's no super easy pattern and we'll just have to do some messy casework. But basically the idea is uh, I'm going to let a of n be the answer for n equals, or for like any value of n. So for example, um, a of one is going to be equal to two since that's the answer for n equals one, right? Three will be equal to a of two and uh, four will be equal to a of three. And, oh, sorry. Uh, 
n equals four should actually result in an answer of six, not five. Okay. And six will be equal to a of four. And basically the idea is uh, we can keep going like this, right? And in the end, we want to find a of 12. So that is what we want to find. And the idea is we're gonna write each a of n in terms of the previous a of n's, right? So for example, uh, in this case, our equation is basically going to be a of n is equal to a of n minus one plus a of n minus three. So um, how did I come up with this equation, right? Well, consider, let's say we have the integers one all the way up to n, and we want a spacey subset of, uh, of this set. Well, any spacey subset will either contain the number n or it will not contain the n, number n, right? Because it either contains or it doesn't contain. So if it does contain the number n, then basically, so let's say uh, n is in some spacey subset s. So this, this basically just means n is in the spacey subset s. Um, then basically n minus one and n minus two cannot be in the spacey subset. So this means cannot be in s. And that's because if either n minus one or n minus two were in the spacey subset, then we would have out of the three consecutive integers from n minus two, n minus one, and n, we would have at least two integers from those three consecutive ones, right? So in other words, we, if we have n, then we cannot have n minus one and n minus two, but the other numbers, we can, uh, we can just do whatever we want, basically. So uh, we basically just have to choose a spacey subset from one to n minus three, and then just stick on an n at the end, right? And the number of ways to do that is just a of n minus three, because that's just the number of ways to choose a spacey subset from one to n minus three, right, by definition. So basically what I'm saying is, if we do choose n, then uh, the number of ways to do that is a of n minus three. So now let's consider what happens if we don't pick n, right? So if we don't pick n, well, um, then we can just choose a spacey subset out of the remaining numbers, right? Because n just basically does not affect our set at all. So we just choose a spacey subset of the other n minus one numbers. So the number of ways to do that is a of n minus one, right? So in other words, a of n minus one is the number of ways to not have n. a of n minus three is the number of ways to have n. So in total, the number of ways to have either have or not have n, it's just a, minus, a of n minus one plus a of n minus three, and that is equal to a of n. And uh, once we set up this equation, we're pretty much just done because now we can just literally start calculating a values, right? So for example, a of five is equal to a of four plus a of uh, three, or sorry, plus a of two, right? Just by plugging in n equals five. And that is going to be equal to six plus three, which is nine. And then we can just keep uh, repeating this process and we will get a of six is going to be equal to uh, 13. And then we will get 19 and 28. All right, so this is a of seven equals 19, a of eight equals 28. And then a of nine is going to be equal to 41. All right, so I'm just literally just using this equation to find successive values of a of n. And a of 10 is equal to 60. Uh, a of 11 is going to be equal to 88. And a of 12 is going to be equal to 129. And that is exactly what we want to find. Right, because a of 12 is the number of ways to choose a spacey subset of one, two, three, all the way up to 12. So that is just our final answer, 129. So you can see, uh, and basically the idea is we just generalize this problem by replacing 12 with any integer n that's at least equal to one. And then uh, we just solve the problem for n equals k, right? For any value of n equals k, we basically wrote an equation for n equals k in terms of the previous uh, n is less than k, right? So um, in other words, we just wrote an expression for the answer in terms of the answers to the smaller versions of the problem. And then uh, we just keep, when we have to find the first few values of n, which over here we did, right? And these are what we call the base cases. And then we just start finding successive values of n using our equation. Okay. And you, you'll kind of notice like there's kind of a similarity to induction here, right? In induction, we prove something for n equals k using the previous cases. Uh, it's kind of similar here, except instead of proving something, we're using uh, numerical values. Uh, if you don't know what induction is, don't worry about that little part. But if you do, then it's just a nice similarity to note. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is kind of what I just said. Right. And it, so re recursion is super common at the weight AMC Amy level. And it's like the computation is not bad, but finding the equation. So in our previous example, uh, finding a of n equals a of n minus one plus a of n minus three, um, that's usually the hard part. Right. You have to first find the equation and then like actually explain why it's true. Okay, and then uh, the variable n in our last problem was basically the size of a set, but in general it can be like any 
length or a number of like items or something, right? For example, length of a string is pretty common, right? If you have like a bunch of letters, that's what we call a string, or just like the number of items, maybe like you have like 10 people or like 10 boxes, or it could just be something else. So you just kind of have to determine for yourself through a lot of practice what n should be. Okay, so let's see another example, this time from the 2006 AME one. Okay, so in this case, we have eight cubes, right? Uh, consisting of side lengths k for each integer one to k or one to eight. So we basically have uh, cubes of side length one to all the way up to eight. And then we're trying to build a tower using all eight cubes according to these really weird conditions. And these really weird conditions, again, they just make casework super difficult because we get a really messy expression. It's super easy to mess up, right? And uh, so any cube may be on the bottom of the tower and the cube immediately on top of a cube with edge length k must have edge length at most k minus two. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but for example, if we have like a cube with side length five, uh, the only things that can go above it are one, two, up to seven, right? Because five plus two is seven. So we cannot have an eight directly on top of the five, but we could have an eight like somewhere up here, right? It says immediately on top. Okay, so that's kind of what the problem is saying. And they're basically asking for the number of different towers that can be constructed and then uh, mod 1000. Okay. So the first thing to do is determine what the variable n should be, right? If we're going to use recursion, because case squared again is super tedious. So in this case, um, there's really only one value that could probably be n. That's the number of cubes, right? Like I said earlier, um, the number of things is often a good candidate for n. So we basically let a of n be the answer for when we have n blocks, right? So we kind of generalize the problem again. So we want a of eight. So let's just start by computing a few values for a of n. So uh, a of one is obviously just one because there's only one way to place one block, right? a of two is uh, equal to two. There are two ways to place the two blocks. We could either have like one, two or two, one. Both of them are completely valid. Um, and obviously these are the only ways. Um, a of three has six ways, right? Uh, because we could have uh, any of three factorial permutations and these will actually all be valid. So one, two, three, one, three, two. Uh, 213, 231, and you can check these are all valid. 312 and 321. For the sake of time, I just won't check them individually, but it's just uh, you need to follow the condition. Okay. Um, at this point, if you keep going, it kind of gets difficult, right? But basically, the idea is in general, when we go from a of n to a of n plus one, uh, we basically multiply the answer by three. So what I'm saying is the equation is a of n plus one is equal to three a of n. And let's think about why this is true. So let's say we have a tower of length n, right? Or height n, I guess I should say. Um, so let's say um, I'll just give a high, tower of height, let's say five. Um, so five, three, four, two, one. This should be about a tower. Okay, so now let's say I wanna add a six block uh, with edge length six, right? So I wanna go from n equals five to n equals six. Well, how, where can I add the six? Well, I can add it right above the five, or I can write, add it right above the four, or I can add it at the very bottom because any cube can go at the bottom, right? So there are three places I can add the six, which means uh, there's three times the possibilities. And in general, this is, uh, you can generalize this, right? So if we have a valid tower of what, height n equals k, then to generate a tower of height n equals k plus one, there are three places we can add the cube of height k plus one. We can either add it right above the tower cube of height k, right? So we can either have k and then have the k plus one right above it. We can have the k minus one and the k plus one right above that. Or we can have the k plus one at the very bottom and then everything else is on top of it. So there are three places where we can add this cube of point k plus one. So three possibilities. So we just multiply by three. And uh, from here, this is just a pretty easy recursion, right? You can kind of just see that in general, uh, well, for example, a4 is going to be equal to 18. a5 is going to be equal to 54, I believe. And uh, in general, a of n is going to be equal to 2 times n, or 2 times 3 to the n minus 2, I believe. Um, so that means a of 8 is going to be equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 6, which is 1458. And since this is an Amy, we need a number integer less than 1,000. So they want basically the remainder when you divide by a thousand. So that's just the last three digits. So 458, that is our final answer. Um, there's something I do wanna bring up. So 
why doesn't our recursion equation work for n equals one, right? For example, if you take n equals one, this equation will tell you that a2 is equal to three times a1, which is clearly absurd because uh, two is not equal to three times one, right? So what, what goes wrong here? Well, the problem, if you consider our argument from earlier, if let's say we have a tower of height k, or where k is equal to one this time, and we wanna go to k plus one where, so we wanna add a, another cube to make a tower of uh, height two, right? Before, like normally we have three places where we can add the cube. We can either add it above, uh, we can either add it above the one, we can add it at the very bottom, or normally we could also add it above the cube with length k minus two, but in this, or sorry, k minus one, right? So in this case, k is equal to one. So if we take the cube of length k minus one, that's just a cube with side length zero, and we don't really have a cube with side length zero. So the argument kind of break down, breaks down here, right? You can't multiply by three. So um, these types of edge cases are fairly common in recursion. I wouldn't say like they show up every time, but uh, you do have to keep an eye out for when they might show up, right? So that's often why uh, you have to compute multiple base cases. And even if you don't have to compute multiple base cases, I would typically just compute the first few just to make sure there's no edge cases that you're missing, right? Because if your recursion equation does not match up with your first few base cases, um, something went wrong. So you have to figure out what that thing is. Okay. On to our third example, which is from the 2008 Amy one oh, sorry. So in this case, the variable for our recursion is the length of the string, right? Or sorry, let me start by reading the problem. Um, we basically want to create sequences of uh, A and B that have the property that every run of consecutive A says even length and every run of consecutive B says odd length, right? For example, A, A, B, and A, A, B, A, A are all valid. Because if you look at like each block of A's, they're always even length. Right. So in this case, they're all twos. Uh, each block of Bs is always auto length. So in this case, they're all ones. Whereas BBAB is not valid because there's a block of Bs with length two, which is even, right? We want to be odd. And there's a block of A's with length one. We want it to be even, but it is odd here. Okay. So they're asking for how many sequences have length 14. So here, um, again, we have this really weird condition, right? So we kind of start noticing these similarities. Um, oftentimes, if you have a really annoying condition and case work just doesn't work super well, Recursion might be a good idea. And in this case, um, we actually have a nice uh, number to use recursion on. In particular, the length of a string I mentioned earlier is a pretty good idea right? to set as n. So in particular, I'll let a of n be this, the answer to this problem when, uh, when you replace 14 with some random integer n. right? So we want a of 14. Okay. So, but the problem here is if we try to go from like a of k and we try to like go to a of k plus one, right? So we basically try to build a sequence of length a k plus one. Um, there's no great way to do that because uh, if we just like, let's say we take a valid, let's say uh, k equals five, right? So let's say k equals five. And let's say we start with a valid sequence of uh, length k. So I'll just use their example, a, a, b, a, a. This is a valid sequence. Um, there's really no great way to go to a sequence of length six, right? Because uh, typically you might try to add like, you know, a letter to the end of a sequence to go from five to six. But the thing is, if you add a letter to the end, um, what letter you can add kind of depends on the current length of the string, right? Or sorry, and not the current length. Uh, it kind of depends on what letter the string currently ends with. For example, if it ends in A, uh, we can only add a B. But if it ends in B, uh, we literally cannot add anything. For example, let's say our string is just like B, B, B. A, A, right? Um, if we add an A, then this lone A at the end evaluates the condition since we have a single A and we need all A's to come in like even lengths. But if we add a B at the, to the end, um, then this run of three B's turns into four B's. So it goes from odd to even, right? So, which is not a lot, obviously. So the problem here is we don't really have a great way to go from K to K plus one. And in fact, uh, even if we just have even if our current string ends with an A and we add a B to the end, that doesn't actually encapsulate all possible ways to generate uh, strings of length K plus one, because this on would only create strings that end with B. And obviously there are strings that don't end with B, right? There are clearly many examples that end with A. So basically um, what I'm saying is we just don't have a good way to go from K to K plus one. So instead we actually have to consider a different approach and we actually have to generate two sequences. Okay, so A of I'm going to create two sequences. One is called a of n, one is called b of n. 
And a of n is basically going to be strings of length n, of course, that satisfy the condition and end with a, right? End with a. So this is very important. And b of n is going to be the number of sequences that are length b or length n and end with b. And of course, satisfy the condition as well. Okay. So the idea here is let's say we want to find a of n plus one, right? The idea here is we can take any sequence of length or uh, of length n minus one that ends with b. For example, uh, let's say n is equal to five. So we can take a sequence that ends with b. So let's say at b, 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 All right? So this is length n minus one, minus one. And then we can just add two a's at the end. And this will not violate the condition because we're adding a block of two a's, which is totally fine since all a's have to come in even lengths and two is even, right? So, uh, a of n plus one is basically going to be b of n minus one plus a of n minus one. Because if we have, for example, a, uh, b, b, a, right? So if we have a string that already ends in a, we can also add another two a's. That's totally fine because we basically go from one a here to three a's, which is still odd, right? An odd number plus two is still, or sorry, um, this is actually, okay, neither of these are valid sequences. Okay, whoops. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, so the first sequence, let's say we have like BAAB, -A -B, and then we add two A's to the end. That goes from uh, a valid sequence to another valid sequence, right? So that, not, no problems there. Uh, for the second example, let's say uh, we have a valid sequence of length four that ends with A. So um, I'll just take AAAA -A 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 as my example, I guess. Um, we could just add another two A's to the end and that will not break anything because we go from four A's to six A's, which uh, is totally fine because we want even lengths. So uh, an even number plus two is gonna be an even number, right? Since we obviously start with an even number because it is valid. Okay. Um, so basically what, I'm, what this is all to say is that A of N plus one is going to be equal to B of N plus one, my, N minus one plus A of N minus one, right? because we can just take any string of length n minus one and add two a's to the end. And that will always give us a valid uh, string of length n plus one that ends with a's. And uh, furthermore, it's also important to note this actually uh, includes all possible strings of length n plus one that end with an a, right? Because if you think about any possible string that ends with a, um, if the length is total length is n plus one, uh, the previous letter also has to have an a. Right, because we can't have this single a at the end since that's not an even number, right? We can't just have one a at a time. So, and then uh, we basically have two a's here at the end. And then if we just cross out these two a's, uh, we can basically take any string of length n minus one and it will always work, right? So yeah, okay. So this is just to say that a of n plus one is equal to b of n minus one plus a of n minus one. And we can basically use the same argument to show that b of n plus one is equal to b of n minus one plus a of n, right? And the reason I say a of n is, for example, let's say again, uh, n equals five. So, uh, so let's say we start with a string of length five, right? So um, let's say b, a, 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 a. Uh, so the problem here is we can't just add two b's to the end because then we would have these two lone b's at the end and two is an even number, whereas we only want odd numbers with the lengths of B sequences, right? So we can actually only add one B at a time if we start with an A at the very end, right? But if we start with the B at the very end, for example, let's say we already had B, 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 um, we have to add two Bs because we have to go from an odd number, right? We start with five Bs in a row and we have to go to another odd number. So we have to add two to get to seven, right? So that's why, uh, it's, N, it's B of N minus one, but it's only A of N, not A of N minus one. So that's a really important distinction here, right? And again, this actually includes all possible uh, sequences of length N plus one that end with B, because if you think about it, if we have like a B at the end, right? And there's a total of N plus one characters here. Um, if the previous letter is an A, then uh, we're pretty much good. We can just take any valid sequence that ends with A and has length N. So that's just this AN over here. But if the previous letter is a B, if we have two Bs in a row, um, then again, we can just pretty much ignore these two Bs and just generate any valid sequence of, uh, or sorry, sorry, uh, I messed this up. Uh, then if we have like another, if we have two Bs at the end, then we have to at least have a third B, right? Because we can't just have two Bs on their own. 
So we have to have three Bs at least. And then at this point, uh, we can literally just take any valid sequence for these n minus one that ends with B, right? Okay, so this just corresponds to B, B of n minus one possibilities for the first n minus one letters. So that's where this B of n minus one comes from. And then again, once we have these equations set up, uh, we can just find the first few base cases, which is pretty easy, right? For example, um, A of one is going to be equal to zero since there's no way to have a sequence of length one that ends with A and also has all A's come in even lengths since we only have one A here, which is not even, right? And B of one is just equal to one um, since we can just have a single B and that's valid, right? Okay, and at this point, um, all that's left is just keep calculating values of A and B, right? We can just calculate A of two and then B of two and A of three and so on. Um, just to save a bit of time, I'm not actually gonna do that, but it's just addition, right? Following this formula. And we will basically get that A of 14 is equal to 80 and A B of 14 is equal to 92, right? And uh, so which ones are answered? Well, they're just asking for any sequences of length 14. So it can either end with an A or a B, so they're basically asking for A of 14 plus B of 14. So we don't pick either 80 or 92, we have to add them both up. And that gets us the final answer of 172. Okay, so that is really it for this video. Uh, thank you all for listening.